Welcome to the Do Good Work podcast. Today, we are talking about the litmus test of digital bootstrapped leaders. So in my small corner of the internet, and it is a small corner, but it's got a nice view. But in my small corner of the internet supporting bootstrapped founders, that means that they rely on their own profits to grow. They don't rely on outside investments. So supporting bootstrap founders, I have found that through experience, one effective litmus test of the effectiveness of a digital leader is how the team responds when the leader is away for a week or two. And this is not just a litmus test to focus on operations. This is a leadership litmus test. Like how well does the team respond when the leader or the founder or the C-suite or the executive team or the whatever title you have for the leadership crew in your company, what happens when they're off for maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, silence from no communication. And typically for small companies, the leader or the founder or the owner is the crux of the operation. And this is, it could be a little difficult for the team to operate because the founder or the leader could be doing everything themselves from closing the new sales to onboarding new clients and ensuring positivity and a good vibe across the entire team. So I think one of the key focus areas or the, one of the key things to pass this litmus test as a digital leader, and you assume that I would say just have tight operations, but that, that means nothing. Like having tight operate, having good operations for your business is actually meaningless. I think the key to, to effective digital leadership, remote work, and the key to passing this litmus test is clarity in the following areas. In clarity in who does what, the roles of the team, clarity on how to execute each important role and function, clarity in the game plan, not only for this the week that the that you're off or the week that the founder steps away, but for maybe the month, the quarter, and clarity in communication across the teams. And clarity stems from specifically in a digital world from communication. And in order to be really clear, crystal clear, the way that you paint the vision, that you define roles, that you define execution, that you define the game plan is through effective communication. And regardless if you're a digital founder, if you're the actual founder of the company or the owner, or you're working at a remote company, you're working remote, communication is one of the standing pillars that will help you grow or could actually hinder growth. Because the higher that you go up in leadership, if you're a manager, then you go to a director or et cetera, the clearer your, ha- your communication has to be. And personally, I can tell you that I'm a work in progress. And I think we all are. And when people ask you like how you're doing, I like to say, well, I'm doing great, but always getting better. I think that's important. There's truth to that. And we always have to be in that beginner's mindset of how can I continually improve And personally, to improve in communication, here are some personal assessments or personal things that I've done that potentially could help you because, again, clear communications allows you to become extremely sharp and clear when you communicate with a team. And when you communicate with a team, especially for bootstrapped digital businesses, if the founder or the leader or take time off, we need to make sure that things are still functioning properly And this all stems from clarity, which stems from communication, which is why I'm going to give some insights of what I personally do that have not only dramatically allowed me and really forced me to improve my communication skills and interpersonal skills as well, because communication, again, is the centerpiece for relationship and relationship with others and your team. So one of the things that really helped me and I try to write daily, I may not be able to write every day and I'll just be honest with you, but my goal was to write every single day. And it really took me two years to pra- of practicing this to actually understand the power of writing. Because when you write, it's, it, it's pretty much your brain on a digital screen or on paper in the better way that you can, obviously that wasn't clear grammar, but the better that you can communicate your in your writing, the clearer your vocal communication or your Slack communication or your email communication will be. I think it's important to write down how we think and what we think. It doesn't have to be a journal. It could be a specific topic of writing, a specific theme, but I would that's what I personally do. And if you take up that practice, I would do that sooner rather than later. I wish I started writing at least seven years ago, at least 10 years ago every day. 
The second is to learn your preferred communication style and those around you. And to go deeper on this, I would suggest looking into personality assessments. There's plenty online. I think DISC is the first one that comes to mind really around, and I'm not pigeonholing everyone into a DISC, obviously, but I think it's important to see how do you like to be communicated to and how do others like to be communicated to. And there's an interesting tool that someone turned me on to. It's called Crystal Knows. Crystal, yeah, Crystal, forgot the website. If I look at it here, it's, yeah, it's crystalnose.com. And I think this tool is pretty cool because it also analyzes those that you work with. I think for free, you can just see the LinkedIn's and it does in a, a, like a guess, best guess. But it also allows you to see, this is how this person likes to be communicated with depending on their personality style or the communication style. And I think knowing thyself is extremely important so that you can better know others and communicate with others and create relationship with others. So that's an important piece too, is to learn your preferred communication style and those around you. The third way that has allowed me to improve my communications, and again, this focuses on clarity, focuses on relationship, focuses on execution and growing and running a team, aka a business, is to actually ask your team, what clarity do they need? And I think one question that we always ask online or that we always ask on a Zoom call or that you always ask after a meeting, so does that make sense? Everything makes sense. People are intelligent. I think the better question to ask, is this clear or where is this lacking in clarity? Or how might we be more clear in our intentions and in the actions that need to happen? Because you might think that you're the clearest person in the world speaking like truth and like knowledge bombs and whatever, or being very detailed in your direction, but the team might pick up something different. So ensuring clarity is the most important thing. And I do speak from experience on that. And the fourth way that I personally has helped me and forced me really to grow in my communication skills is just to learn a lot from books, audiobooks, programs, podcasts, and the more in my opinion, the more connections that you can make, the more, I think, what synapses that you can connect in your brain and the better your storytelling can become. And the more stories that you can either share a story or be, uh, create analogies, people can pick up on that and people learn through story. People learn through analogy. And it's, I know it's a little odd. I'm not even telling stories on this podcast, but Maybe I'm tail say I definitely flex analogies a lot, but the more that you learn, the more your brain can connect the dots between separate things and the more that you can recall stories or instances or different forms to communicate the same point across maybe five different ways. And that is not only fruitful for yourself to grow, but also to be able to come to any situation and have at least a couple of educational experiences around that and be able to connect the dots. And maybe you don't have all the answers, but that's fine. But at least how you can come to answers and how you can work with teams to come to solutions and be able to communicate effectively. So the litmus test of the bootstrap leader is what happens when you go away, but that is just the surface level. The key is how clear are you as a leader? And maybe ask your team, for example, like you can go to your team right now and give not a pop quiz for as a pop quiz, but you can give a pop quiz and saying, hey, what is the mission that we're trying to accomplish? Or do you know what our top priorities are for this quarter? Or do you know what our top priorities are for this week? And if you try that, tell me how the responses go. Would you be surprised? Would you be satisfied? Would you be alarmed? And I think that's a small test that we can take to ensure that there is clarity, not only from you to your team, but also clarity within yourself, clarity and alignment, because maybe as leaders, we need to practice more clarity so that we know which direction to walk in, so that we know where we're actually going, so that we can better lead others and better lead the team. If you found today's podcast episode valuable, please consider sharing this with someone that you believe it might also help as well. You never know, you might be the catalyst that actually opens them up to a new way of operating their business and experiencing life. As always, it is an honor to be a small part of your journey. This is Raul Hernandez. Do good work.